Welcome on in. I know it's been a little while, but uh, we decided, uh, I decided that I needed a bit of a break, so I'm um, going to collect with myself, decide what I wanted to do, and so we're going to, you know, kind of ease our way back into it. But, uh, so today we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about um, uh, one of the pre-cons. We had... Um, kind of started on the building blocks of it on the last stream. Uh, unfortunately, we did have like a small uh, personal emergency. Uh, luckily, Duncan is doing just fine. He hasn't had any uh, further symptoms. Um, but yeah, so a little, little bit uh, um, of a of a scare. But uh, yeah, he's doing he's doing just fine. Uh, so anyway, uh, last time we had. Uh, we had worked on the uh, Velasa Ramter precons, and we were working on the blood rights. And initially, I landed on the sub commander, um, Carmen Cruel Sky Marcher. And uh, the reason being is that she felt like a better commander overall. Um, uh, but there are like a few issues and uh it looked like it was something that needed to be addressed and so i did kind of go back to clavelenio first of the blessed um specifically because he has um he does have a trigger in here that uh, when the creature dies, you could do get to draw a card. And that is quite nice. Um, being able to draw cards and put yourself in a place, in a position where uh, you are um, not as susceptible to board wipes, and let, you know, except for, you know, exile effects uh, such as Sunfall or uh, Farewell. Um it, not only are you do you still have presence on the board, but you also get to draw a bunch of extra cards. Uh, so that I think is kind of like the power behind him. the The problem is that uh, he is a bit clunky, and in practice, uh, everyone kind of just ignores your attacks, uh, and then you don't really get to do a whole lot of what you do like so you do get that protection from board wipes but otherwise you're, you're just kind of like stuck with a bunch of small creatures that uh you wish could get bigger but you they really don't um so th there is definitely like a place for him he's definitely a vampire matters commander but he is not all that great um the the draw effect i think is probably the best part so we kind of went back, we retooled, and we came back to Carmen. And Carmen, uh, for those who don't remember, is 5 mana, 2-2. Two, two. So her, her stats, she is very undersatted. Um, so 2-2 two, two with flying. Whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, you put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Carmen, uh, and you gain a life. Whenever Carmen attacks, return up to 1 target permanent from with mana value less than or equal to... Carmen's power from your graveyard to the battlefield. So you it has you have a lot of recursion. It's in your graveyard. It's not it's not everyone else's. But um, this opens up a lot of things that you can do with uh, aristocrats and sacrifice. Um, and you're not specifically in vampires, though they are a you know they are still a theme uh, within this deck. So. What do we do here? Well, we add a bunch of sacrifice effects and sacrifice um, things that like don't mind being sacrificed. So, for instance, we have um, Blood Artist. When, any, when a, another creature dies or Blood Artist itself, target player loses a life, you gain a life. Um, Indulgent Aristocrat. Whenever you can sacrifice a creature... Put a plus one plus one counter on each other vampire, each vampire you control. Uh, Master of Dark Rites, tap, um, sacrifice another creature, and then you basically have a dark ritual. Three three mana. Morbid Opportunist. Whenever another creature 
Uh, whenever more one or more creatures dies, you draw a card. Um, then you have stuff like selfless savior, selfless spirit. Uh, these sacrifice themselves and then gives your creatures indestructible. Uh, and then you also have Playcrafter. Playcrafter enters the battlefield. Each player sacrifices a creature or a planeswalker. So you can see very strong theme of sacrifice here. Um, we also have stuff that uh, allows you to sacrifice things such as Bartol Bartolome. Uh, it's a 2-1. Sacrifice another creature or artifact. Put a plus one plus one counter on Bartolome. So uh, yeah, just you can... Uh, if, if anything gets targeted, you just immediately sacrifice it to him. Same with Woe Strider. Comes in with a goat. You can sacrifice Scry 1. Uh, Viscerous here has, does the same thing. All, you know, vampire, vampire. This is a horror. Uh, Yeheni, you can sacrifice another creature and it gains indestructible until the end of turn. Just very strong sacrifice effects. Um, so, when all of uh, Braids... At the end of your end step, you sacrifice an artifact creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker. If you do, each opponent may sacrifice a permanent that shares a type with it. If they don't, they lose two life and you draw a card. So, just amazing stuff because you don't care if things go into the bin. It pumps up your commander. Uh, and then whenever she attacks, she brings it back. Um, one of the strongest thing uh, cards that are in here is Roaming Throne. Uh, it's a new card from the set. It's a 4-4 War 2 Golem. Uh, as it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type. It becomes that creature type, so you, obviously you're going to choose vampires. Uh, if a triggered ability of another creature you control is of that chosen type is triggered, it triggers an additional time. So, what that means. Uh, so this works for both Carmen and Clavelinio. Uh, they both have two triggered abilities uh, on them natively. So whenever a player, uh, and, and for those of you who are not as familiar with magic, uh, triggered abilities are usually um, personified with at or when or whenever. Um, th that is usually the marker of a triggered ability. So uh, whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, doesn't have to be you. Uh, she put a plus one plus one counter on Carmen and you gain a life that will trigger twice now with roaming throne whenever she attacks return up to one target permanent with mana value less than or equal to her power from your graveyard to the battlefield that will now trigger twice so excellent amazing card uh really huge um benefits to that um then we have um, we have other just like you know really good vampire stuff. So we have a uh, bloodline keeper. Uh, not may not necessarily going to be not sure if we're going to keep him in here or not. Th this is one of those cards where it's just like well I I did purchase him so I kind of want to use him but he may not end up fitting in this deck. But he's a flying three three. He's really good. It's just like maybe he's not going to end up working in this deck. Um, flying 3-3, you tap him, create a 2-2 black vampire creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Uh, and then you can pay one black mana, transform him only if you have five or more vampires. Uh, and he becomes a 5-5. Five, five. Other vampire creatures you control have plus 2, plus 2. You can tap and and still make another 2-2 two, two if, you, if you want with the 5-5. Five, five. So uh, very good. Um, we also have stuff like Alanda's in here. This is, uh, her, a new card, uh, the Herofont, uh, it's a flying one, one, whatever you create, you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on her. And then when she dies, create X one, one white, white vampire creature tokens with life link where X was her power. Same with, a, you know, very similar to Alanda, the dusk rose. She is a one, one life linker. Whenever another creature dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on her. And then same thing where she dies, you create X one, one fight white uh, vampire creature tokens with uh, life link. So these two work very well together. They're very similar. Uh, and then you have Amalia. So Amalia Benavides Aguirre is one of my new favorite cards in standard. Uh, and I'm, very hopeful for 
um, how well she does in Commander. So she's a two mana, two, two. Uh, ward, pay three life. So the ward's not really all that impressive um, in Commander, but that's not really the uh, the important part. Uh, the, the more important part, and what I think is going to be kind of overlooked by people until she gets up to like until she gets up to 20 which uh, then i think people are going to be a little bit more wary about her but um is that whenever you gain life which is very easy in this deck uh she explores and then you destroy all other creatures if her power is exactly 20 um so explore is a new mechanic that was introduced where uh, when you when a creature explores, uh, you reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you immediately put it into your hand. And if it's a non-land card, you can then choose to keep it on top or put it in the bin. Uh, you put it in the graveyard, and that creature gets a plus one, plus one counter. Um, so this is where I think like she's secretly amazing, especially in black and white, is... Uh, neither color have really good ramp. Like, black definitely has good card draw and card fetching and stuff like that. White really doesn't. Uh, and then, so this really can help you out. Because what she can do is, she will, you know, you gain life, she will trigger, and then all of a sudden, you're just now just going, at your, you're adding all the lands uh, from your deck on into your hand, so you're never going to miss a land drop ever if she is out on the battlefield like there's almost no way that you're ever going to miss a land drop and then she can also just throw stuff into the bin which is going to synergize well with carmen who's just going to return it back from the graveyard onto the battlefield so like these two really just work very well together and i, and I think it's being overlooked a lot uh like i don't understand why this isn't in more of the like more of the decks that are going out um but we'll we'll see maybe maybe i'm just over evaluating her but uh, i think that she's secretly amazing in this deck um last we have uh Enrica domnathi uh just another creature that with flying um and you get to you get to choose a mode for her uh at every combat um, she transforms into a 3-4 and you can pump up um, creatures uh, that have uh, keywords. Uh, Champion of Dusk is packed of this it's just packed with the serpent stapled onto a card. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, you draw X cards and you lose X life where X is the number of vampires you control. So um, yeah, you can slam this down, draw a bunch of cards uh, if needed. Uh, Charismatic Conqueror is an amazing card. 2-2 uh, two, two with Vigilance. Whenever an artifact or creature comes into the battlefield untapped under an opponent's control, they may tap that permanent. If they do not, you create a 1-1 one, one va white vampire creature token with lifelink. So this is kind of blind obedience. Kind of stapled onto it. Uh, and then, so obviously this is Aristocrats and we're going to be pumping up our commander and then because she already has flying, she's going to get around a lot. Of, and you're just going to get to a point where you're just going to like hit for big damage and people are going to be afraid. So we have to protect our commander. So we have stuff like Mother of Runes. Tap, tar give target creature um, protection of the color of your choice. Selfless Savior, Sacrifice to give creatures indestructible. Same with Selfless Spirit. Uh, and what's the other one? I think there was one other one that I was thinking of. But uh, yeah, so we basically were just... Because uh, the commander is already expensive. And so like we don't want to be casting over seven, nine, eleven mana. Like you know, after ten mana, it's kind of just like pointless because you're gonna to have to start back at a two two. Um so there there is 
some weaknesses that we have to address on this commander. So we need to keep her on the battlefield for as long as possible. Um, other things that we have here, we have uh, Buried Alive. So this is, allows us to fetch uh, creatures that we specifically want, throw them into the bin, and then we can go and collect them with Carmen later. Uh, Dam was included. It's a very it's a, one of the best cards. You destroy a target creature, cannot be regenerated, or you overload it, and it becomes Wrath of God, uh, which is very nice. Diabolic Intent allows you to uh, throw or fetch a specific card, put it into your hand uh, by sacrificing a creature. Olivia's Wrath is another board wipe. Uh, it, it, it loses some power just because we're not in uh, full vampires anymore but i think it's going to be totally fine this is a really nice it, it's like partially one-sided uh pact of the serpent we already talked about right of oblivion uh is a nice exile effect for only two mana and all we have to do is sacrifice a non-land permanent which we are totally happy doing uh same with victimize i may just get rid of this depending on how well carmen is especially because we have we have both redemption choir and sun titan which also recur stuff uh, and if we have Roaming Throne, we're, we're already recurring a lot here. So we, I may take out Victimize. I'm not sure yet. But it allows us to sacrifice a creature and bring two creature cards from the battlefield onto the back to the battlefield tapped. Um, speaking of keep uh, protecting our commander, we have Flawless Maneuver, which is um, allows us to uh, give everything indestructible. Uh, and we can do pay it or it's free with our commander out which is quite nice uh plumb the forbidden if we are unable to protect our commander and everyone someone does wipe the board this is a very nice card to uh refill our hand uh so we can sacrifice all of our creatures uh to plumb the forbidden draw a bunch of cards and because of the nature of our commander we're gonna have a lot of life to uh be able to to do this and then we have more sacrifice effects soul shatter stroke of midnight uh targets any non-land permanent which is really nice it's basically generous gift um but doesn't target lands swords plowshares if we have something that won't die uh or has indestructible we can use swords uh village rights obviously to sacrifice and then uh vona's hunger very nice card uh, each opponent sacrifices a creature if you have the city's blessing, which is uh, 10 or more permanents. Um, each opponent sacrifices half the creatures they control rounded up. So, um, then we get to our mana rocks. And this, we, we went a little bit hard on the mana rocks, more, much more than I normally would, because she does cost that, uh, you know, extra. So we have Arcane Signet, we have Commander Sphere, which, yeah, like, not not my favorite, but I think it needs to be in here. Uh, the Sacrifice effect is is kind of nice because you can bring it back if, if not, you, know, you don't have anything else uh, in the bin. Being able to sacrifice it and then bring it back with Garmin is kind of funny. Uh, Skull Clamp, we're going to be sacrificing a lot of things. We might as well draw cards while doing so. Soul Ring, obviously. Swiftfoot Boots is nice, uh, especially for the Hexproof. Talisman of Hierarchy um, definitely needs to be in here. And then Wayfarer's Bopple. Uh, obviously, we can sacrifice that as well to get another basic um, while we're kind of setting up. But then we have uh, these two. And these really do synergize well with our commander. So Blade of the Blood Chief, which was in the precon. Uh, whenever a creature dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, if... The equipped creature is a vampire. Put two plus one plus sun counters on it in set. So, you sacrifice a creature. Or, yeah. You, so, for instance, you sacrifice a creature. This will trigger Carmen. And then this will trigger Blade of the Blood Chief twice. So, all of a sudden, she now gets three plus one plus one counters on her. Making her already a 5-5. Five five. It's very easy to quick for her to quickly get out of control. Terry and Soul Cleaver, same thing. Uh, equipped creature has Vigilance, which makes her even better. Uh, flying Vigilance is kind of amazing. Whenever another artifact or creature is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on equipped creature, equip two. 
So, uh, this no longer just cares about creatures. It also it cares about artifacts. And what what better would be than Commander Sphere, Wayfarer's Bobble, a bunch of treasures. So, yeah, if both of these are on here, and you're just if you're just dumping creatures, um, the other thing is that it doesn't care if it's your creatures. Like it could just be anything, uh, which just makes it even better. So, yeah, like you are already going to be just pumping your commander up and then just like you you just swing for lethal like this very funnily like turned into a voltron deck like unintentionally uh and this is not like voltron like the traditional voltron sense where it's like you you know you're putting a bunch of uh, enchantments on this creature it's just you're sacrificing stuff and you're for forcing your opponents to sacrifice stuff and then your creature in the meantime just gets ridiculously large um yeah and, and then just the fact that that soul cleaver um cares about artifacts is just amazing uh yeah it, it's it's quite funny how fast um she can grow uh Especially when you have stuff like Playcrafter and Fleshbag Marauder. And I might even put in another one um, if we decide that Drana, like Drana might be one of the weaker cards that are in, is in here. Um, so I might get rid of her and just put in a third Sacrifice Outlet because when, when these CTV you're most likely you're you're talking about three or four creatures being sacrificed uh at any given time and then you so like you do that in your pre-combat phase uh she gets pumped up four times or blade of the blood sheaf she gets pumped up 12 times from just one card and then she you go to attack you you say that she is attacking before combat occurs you can bring back fleshback marauder and then another four creatures are sacrificed and all of a sudden you have been you have pumped her up 20 24 times she's now a 25 25 she's going to be lethal commander on turn six like that that is a legitimate possibility it's not very hard to do um so yeah uh for enchantments uh i did have a lot of more enchantments and then i had to i had to cut it down uh but we do have dictative erebos and grave pact uh, in here it, they just synergize too well in this deck so uh you are sacrificing stuff then all of your opponents are sacrificing now forced to sacrifice stuff as well so you sacrifice a meaningless zero one goat and then you get three creatures uh from your opponents um exquisite blood this does go infinite i may cut it uh depending on on just kind of like how it goes because this this does go infinite with like a lot of things and i didn't really want to go infinite uh but basically whenever an opponent loses life you gain that much life and then stuff like veto the thorn of the dust grows whenever you gain life target opponent loses that much life and so it just becomes like right there that's an infant combo so we may take it out. It, it's just, it was included in the pre-con. It's very exciting that it's in the pre-con, and so I'm leaving it in there. If not, we might just put Black Market Connections because that is a really good card, and, it, you know, it doesn't risk going infinite. And But being able to, one, make a treasure token, two, draw a card, three, make a uh, changeling that we can just sacrifice, really just... Um, Really, it's just going to make things sing. Uh, I And then uh, Smothering Tithe, obviously. 
Uh, really good card. I just happen to have one. Um, whenever an opponent draws a card, you may that player may pay two, or if they don't, you create a treasure token. No one pays the two. No, unless it's like really late game, no one is paying the two. They have stuff to do. They're you're getting a treasure token, and stuff like Terry and Soulcleaver, or even Carmen herself cares about treasure tokens being sacrificed. It's really nice. Uh, as for lands, uh, Bajukabog, Castle Lechthwain, um, uh, we're trying it. Um, Case of Koilos, uh, obviously we have a, we're going to have a ton of health. Like we do not care about the ping damage. Command Tower, uh, Fabled Passage also works very nicely with Carmen. If you already have five lands out, uh, you're going to be untapping it while fetching godless shrine obviously uh high market is a really nice card a sacrifice outlet um shattered sanctum secluded courtyard for vampires uh we have our basics in here path of ancestry obviously for vampires uh obscura storefront is a sacrifice outlet carmen cares about sacrifice so that's really nice uh marsh flats is another sacrifice outlet I believe the internet is fixed. And welcome on in, Ace. How are you doing? Oh, that was a neck crack. Uh, isolated Chapel. Shine Shadow Snarl. Uh, may get, I don't know. Like, Amelia will probably fix this. So, like, I think it's probably going to be fine. Uh, Shizo. Uh, what ended up being the solution? Being as belligerent as possible to Xfinity. That was the solution. Checks out. Yeah. So, um, I didn't know about Shizo. I wish I did. This actually came out. That's how the Kim stores had to fix their internet back in 2015. I, I fully expect that in like March, April, I'm going to have to do this all over again. Cause it does seem to be that like when it gets cold outside, like something happens, it doesn't make any sense, but then the, the internet goes to shit. And then when it starts to form up again, the internet goes to all to hell again. And we have to do it. And we have to go through this whole song and dance all over again. I don't know why, but like ever since I moved here to Denver, like this is what I've had to deal with. Uh, so yeah, so she's a death store uh, storehouse. Quite a card. Uh, this is a better, probably a better version of Rogue's Passage. Uh, cause Rogue's Passage is effectively five mana or like five lands. Because it's four and tap th that, and it becomes unblockable. Excuse me. This is um, one black and tap, and then target legendary creature, i.e. your commander, uh, now has fear. And, like, yeah, it's not unblockable, but, like, you can certainly go through, and since your commander already has flying... How many people are going to have a bunch of flying, like black flying creatures? So it it really does limit your options, and it's a lot cheaper than uh, Rogue's Passage. Uh, Vault of Champions is the battle bond land, and then Valderan Estate. Uh, really, it's just here to make blood tokens so that we have something more to sacrifice. Because literally, that is like the only thing we want to do in this deck is just sacrifice as much shit as possible uh etchings of the chosen i did didn't really get to um it's just another way to keep carmen onto the battlefield as be best as possible because yeah like i said before carmen needs to stay on the battlefield you don't want her to reset it's because it's just gonna I, I mean she can quickly build up power again this might be the next Vishgras as as uh because 
even though she, yeah, she's a 2-2, two, two, it's just like, I don't know if I really want to spend 9 mana for a 2-2. Two, two. A new fish man. Yes, exactly. So, she, all she cares about is anyone sacrificing anything. Any player on the field sacrifices something, she will, she gains power. It's it's quite remarkable how fast she grows. Uh, and then our one splurge card that we did over here is uh, Liliana, Dreadhorde General. Uh, I did have Soren in here for quite a while and then decided, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, pull the trigger on this purchase. So whenever a creature you control dies, you draw a card. Already, this is just a wonderful, <laughs> a wonderful Planeswalker. So, six mana for a six loyalty planeswalker. Whenever a creature you control die, dies, draw a card. Plus one, her get a 2 2 black zombie creature token. There we got some fodder. Minus four, each player sacrifices two creatures. That is eight power for cart your commander right there. Uh, and then minus nine, which I don't think we'll ever get to. Uh, each opponent chooses a permanent. They control of each permanent type and then sacrifices the rest. Like, it's never going to happen. But, uh, yeah, you, th you throw this down. Minus four her. Everyone sacrifices two creatures. You, you just grow your commander to ridiculous heights already. And then just, like, yeah. Then this is like a turn five, turn six. Like, it's absurd. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it going into, uh, what we were considering because like I went through several iterations on this deck and I still don't know if we've actually fully landed on everything, you know, that we want to do, uh, especially because we went back to Clavelenio, back to Carmen. So, uh, for Planeswalkers, we had... Looked at uh, Imperious Brood Lord or Blood Lord. Um, target creature gets uh, Death Touch and Life Link until end of turn if it's a vampire. Put a plus one one so counter on it. You may sacrifice a vampire. Um, deals three damage to any target and you gain three life. Or you may put a vampire card from your hand onto the battlefield. That one is not for going to be worth it. Uh, this is the one that was included in the deck. Or in the pre-con, where you, you create a 1-1 one, one black vampire creature token. You get an emblem that creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0. And you can also minus 6 him, which I've done. And it was actually really nice. Um, destroy up to 3 target creatures and or planeswalkers. Return each card from a graveyard this way onto the battlefield under your control. So, like, you can destroy 3 things and then they are now yours, which is quite nice. But... Ultimately, it decided, uh, like, we could probably do better. Uh, Eternal Wanderer, I, I threw in here and decided, you know what, that's not what... It's probably not worth it, especially at... Um, so, you can minus four her. Uh, for each player, choose a creature that uh, player controls. Each player sacrifices all creatures they control not chosen this way. So, this is a board wipe. Um, so obviously you're just going to keep your commander and then you just, like, everyone sacrifices anything. Like, I, there is potential here. Like, you, you play this, someone has, like, a million tokens. Like, there's one person in the play group that I play with at the, at the local game store. And he just makes, like, a million rabbits. Like, it's not even funny, like, how fast, like, he can just make, like, 96 rabbits. So, like, you throw down the Eternal Wanderer, and you say, everyone, uh, like, you're going to get one rabbit, and then you're going to sacrifice the rest. I'm going to keep my commander. You're going to keep that shitty mana dork, and then sacrifice the rest of your stuff. Uh, and then you get, you know, whatever. Uh, and then Carmen is now going to be pumped up over 100 And that's game. So, there is potential for this. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, it's such, a, it's such a ridiculous, like, synergy on it. Uh, Anawan, 
Uh, so these are the creatures that I had considered. Part of it was just because uh, we were trying to kind of like nail down the sacrifice effect. The other was just, it was in the pre-gone and, and different commander. So Anawan, before we kind of like moved on to like having non-vampires on here, it didn't make any sense to keep him in because we have non-vampires and so we would be forced to sacrifice them. Uh, Blood Gas, really good card, just not in this deck because, I mean, we can sacrifice other things, and honestly, we can bring them. We can bring them back, so I don't care if like Blood Gas is in here or not. And if he's not going to be able to block, then what do I care? Um, Butcher of Malakir, I th am thinking I might put him back in. He is seven mana. Um, basically, he's just a, another Dictate of Erebos tabled onto a, a creature. Uh, captivating Vampire, really nice card. Uh, but we're not going this route. So you can tap five uh, untapped Vampires you control. Gain control of target creature, it becomes a Vampire in addition to its other types. So this is a Vampire as Matters, and basically you're just stealing a creature, turning into a Vampire, and, and yeah. But really, we're just looking to sacrifice like sacrifice stuff and make everyone else sacrifice stuff. So like, I really don't think that there's ever going to be a time where we're like, hey, you know what we have is five just random vampires just like sitting around and we can just like tap them all. Like that's almost never going to happen. We're probably going to have like three or four vampires out. Everything else is being sacrificed. Everyone else's stuff is being sacrificed. So yeah. Uh, Clive Alenio, again, he's just clunky, and we're, we've kind of moved on past him, so he's just getting cut. Uh, Edgar, really wanted to use this guy. He's four mana for a 4-4, four, four. other, he's a vampire lord, so he gives other vampires one plus one plus one. Uh, and then when he dies, you transform him into his casket. And it's a legendary artifact at the beginning of your upkeep. Create a 1-1 one, one white-black vampire creature token with lifelink and put a bloodline counter on his coffin. Then if there are three or more bloodline counters, remove it and then transform him back. So he just kind of, like when he dies, he goes and rests in his coffin for three turns. Making uh, vampire creature tokens in the process. Um, Ellis Eelcore, I really like. I threw her in. Um, but we are, we have other creatures that are doing this, and they are vampires. And so we're just... Right now, she's just out, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. But uh, And then Giza, I was thinking about this. I, I, I really wanted to try her uh, in this deck, but I decided not to. And I think... Yeah, um, so if a creature in opponent controls would die, exile it instead. The So the problem with Giza and Patron of the Vein in 2 is that um, there's a card. Yeah, Tearing and Soul Cleaver doesn't like this because they actually have to hit the graveyard. Um, so, and then... I don't know. We're not looking to just, like, steal everything. We're just kind of, like, killing everything and then just, like, I don't know. She might come back. Uh, same with Jajar, uh, Ghoul Caller. Like, we originally thought about having vampires with zombies and then just kind of decided not to. They were just better, better cards. Same with Legion Lieutenant. It's just a vampire lord. Don't really care. Lotho. Lotho was a hard cut. And I think part of it was just that people can play around it. Maybe not intentionally. Uh, I don't know. I think he's underrated. We we could definitely put him back in. Uh, whenever a player casts their second spell each turn, you lose a life and create a treasure token. And what do we care about is just making treasure tokens and then sacrificing them. Uh, Maven Fane, he's in the precon and he just is a little slow. Um, so he's a 2-2, and then whenever one or more non-token vampires you control attack, create a 1-1 vampire creature token with lifelink. So, like, every every turn with your commander, you can create a 1-1. He's just... 
Like, I just kind of, like, want him to do something more. But, uh, Nighthawk Scavenger just has a bunch of keywords on him. Um, at best, he's probably going to be, like, a 4-3. 4-3 with Flying Death Touch Life Leg. Okay. Uh, Order of the Sacred Dusk is just way too expensive for what it is. Um, Sanctum Seeker, I might also... Uh, just put back in. I don't know because the problem is you don't. You're not necessarily attacking with a bunch of vampires. You're normally just going to be attacking with just the one commander. So yeah, that that's why I ultimately cut them because if I'm only going to be attacking with one, then it's just like one light. You know. Each opponent loses one life and you gain a life. And and the commander doesn't really care about that. And just dealing one extra damage to everyone is not like that impactful. And gaining one health is also not that great. Uh, and then Vona, she's just a little too... Like, if it were like Exile, I would probably be like more keen on her. But like... Paying seven life and then like destroying something when we're like we're forcing everyone to sacrifice a bunch of shit is probably I don't know. Like the the fact that she could target artifacts and enchantments does kind of like make it kind of intriguing, but it is seven man or seven life, and you can only do that a couple times. Um as for sorceries, I did think about uh additional recursion, so stuff like back for seconds, beseech the mirror, which have bargain where you sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token. Uh so I thought about that, but we did cut a lot of our token making stuff out, so that's why these are now in the bin. Uh back beseech the mirror is an amazing card, though. Uh back for seconds is just recursion. Uh it's just it's essentially victimized, which we were also thinking about cutting anyway. Uh, by invitation only is another like really nice board wipe because you can like if someone's going super wide, uh, like the like the rabbits, um, and you're not keeping up with them, and then you get this card, and so you can say, uh, I'm going to just choose four because you have four creatures out and then you don't have to sacrifice anything or maybe you do like and you don't care and then everyone else has to sacrifice every creature that they have which just pumps up carmen like it's great um demonic tutor obviously you know we thought about it i think um <clears throat> uh Ch -ch -ch diabolic intent is just going to be better synergy and it's a cheaper card uh, New Blood was uh, also just another uh, captivating camp vampire where you can tap vampires to gain control of target creature and it becomes a vampire. Uh, Torment of Hailfire was another kind of like sacrifice outlet. Decided, eh, let's let's do something else. Uh, same with Tragic Arrogance. So for five mana for each player, you choose among them per uh, each permanent. So artifact creature, enchantment, and planeswalker. And then they sacrifice all other non-land permanents they control. So, uh, yeah, you get to basically just say, uh, all of your sh good shit is going to be sacrificed. All of my good shit is going to stick around, uh, and then pump up my commander and then I'm just going to swing in. So I don't know, may end up bringing it back. I think this is better than by invitation only. Uh, there was another card in here that was actually really good. Uh, was Wedding Invitation. Um, speaking of uh, not being able to block. So when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. Then you can tap, sacrifice the invitation. Dark creature cannot be blocked. And if it's a vampire, you get a lifelink. So. Uh, instance, we had more just sacrifice stuff. Uh, Shieldred's Edict, I thought... I don't know. It 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 definitely it definitely works and it definitely could work in this deck. Um we're just kind of like kind of having to make some really tough cuts uh, at this point. Um Artifacts. Uh there was some ramp with expedition map. I decided to do the wafer's bobble because it does actually let us ramp 
harder rather than just search for a land card. Um, cause I, yeah. Um, portal to Phyrexia was another thing where I was like, Oh yeah. Like let's just make people sacrifice stuff, but it is nine mana. Like th this could definitely work. Um, basically you just with Amelia, you throw it in the bin and then you bring it back with Carmen. But at that point you're probably already going to be winning. Uh, Weapon Pharabos was another card that was recommended where all creatures uh, you control have lifelink and then return target card from your graveyard at the uh, to the battlefield. It gains haste, exile at the end of your end step. Um, really, it's just, you know, having lifelink. Uh, Glasscast Heart was in the precon. Makes a lot of sense with Clavelenio, not so much with Carmen. Uh, Lightning Greaves, I decided, because we're using other uh, equipment, that we would use Swift Foot Boots instead. Thought Vessel, I, I think we're okay with stuff going into the graveyard, so there's no need for maximum, no maximum hand size. Uh, and then, yeah. And then, yeah, like I said, I made a lot of cuts and enchantments. Like, I really had to make some tough decisions here. So Bastion of Remembrance, uh, you create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token, and then whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses a life and you gain life. Again, like that's already built into our commander, so there's no real need to um, duplicate this effect. Uh, Black Market Connections, it's in the pirate uh, precon, which is very exciting. And really could, it does have a good case to like be at, you know, included in this one. So, uh, at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you choose one or more. And you can choose to sell contraband. So, you create a treasure token uh, for one life. You can buy information, draw a card, and lose two life. Or hire a mercenary. You create a 3-2 shape shifter uh, and lose three life. So, full send would be losing six life, drawing a card, making a treasure token, and making a 3-2 shapeshifter. It's really tempting to throw this card in. It really is. Because everything about this synergizes well with, with Carmen. Because you have a treasure token, you draw an extra card, which is still kind of difficult uh, in this deck. There are ways that, we, that we've been able to do it, but like drawing extra cards is still going to be quite nice. Uh, and then you have a 3-2 that you can sacrifice because you really just don't care about it. And technically it's a vampire. So um, if you decide to sacrifice something else, it's going to get the additional benefits of it. Uh, Blind Obedience was also a card that I thought about uh, where you can... We have Extort. But ultimately I decided maybe it's not... Like, it's nice. It it certainly would... It, it definitely has its benefits. It's just not synergizing with everything else that we're doing in this deck. Uh, Curse of the Restless Dead. Just... Um, this was kind of at the beginning where I was like, okay, I'm going to find as much sacrifice fodder as possible. So making a 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decayed every turn because they're doing land drops. But... I think we're fine with our we with everything that we have so far. Uh, Feast of the Victorious Dead was another thing that I thought about where you could pump up Carmen further. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, if one or more creatures die that turn, you gain that much life and distribute that many plus one plus one counters among creatures you control. So I thought, well, you know, we can we can double up on the amount of plus one plus one counters we get on Carmen. And then I found out that Carmen just goes and explodes anyway. Uh, so this was just not necessary. And so that, that's why we cut it. Uh, same with Legion's landing. It's um, you create a one, one uh, life linker uh, token. And if you attack with three or more creatures, you can transform it. So this was a little bit of a wider strategy than what we're doing. Uh, and then you can pay three mana and tap it for a 1-1 one, one lifelinker. We don't need to do that. Like, we have other things that we can do with our mana. Like, so we're we're cutting it. Uh, Phyrexian Arena. My, uh, like, 
drawing cards is definitely like something that that could still be an issue with this deck. Uh, same with vampiric rites, where I thought about it's a sacrifice outlet that allows us to draw a card. Um, Phyrexian Reclamation, really good card, not necessary because of Carmen. Uh, Promise of Alkazots is, um, it synergizes well with Clamelenio a little bit because he can only do it once per turn and this allows you to do it another time, uh, because you just make a 4-3, um, vampire creature token and then you, uh, at the beginning of your end step, if you sacrifice a non-demon creature, you populate, and you obviously you just be populating your four threes with flying. So it works well with him, not so much in this deck. Uh, Virtue of loyalty, also, it's just a, like it's a really good card, giving everything uh, vigil like pseudo vigilance and get a plus one plus one counter. Um, but we got other stuff that we could do, and the virtue of persistence was also something I was thinking about. But again, we're not doing the. Um, we're not doing the like grabbing other people's stuff and you know bringing it to our side we are just focused on popping up our commander and just swinging big uh and then lands unclaimed territory and restless fortress i i mean it's i mean it's essentially secluded courtyard and i was a little afraid that like our uh, instances of sorceries might get a little mucked up because we won't be able to like there's a lot of <coughs> excuse me there's a lot of pips in this deck and some of the stuff here is not all necessarily vampires and so i didn't want to include so many of those types of lands restless fortress i did really consider but at this uh because it, it makes a one four for four mana that can attack and then when it attacks a oh, target player loses two life and then you gain two life but then i re kind of just realized that we're we don't really care about the life gain um only amalia cares about the life gain and so therefore it's not necessarily something that we're focused on so that's why it's got but so yeah this is this is the deck it's it plays very well um It curves nicely, like the you know this is the curve right here. It's very well done. Um, it it has a lot of power to it. The the only and then like if anyone board wipes, like we have a lot, we can get a lot out of it. Um, or like we can at least protect ourselves very well. So the, the big thing, like really all you really want to do is you just want to bring out a commander at turn four, turn five, uh, ideally turn four, and then uh, just protect her with any of these kind of creatures right here. Uh, and then like one of the nice things is that if once they die, she will bring them back, which is really nice. Uh, and then, you know, if if she's getting too big and she wants to bring back like a Liliana or something like you have Sun Titan and Redemption Choir that will do it for her. So like the, there's a lot of like really nice synergies in here. And like, uh, as long as you kind of like get under kind of like understand the concept of like, okay, it makes sense to sacrifice this thing now uh and and bring it back later like it, like this this deck hums so um yeah like i said like drana might be something that we take out same with victimize uh and we would put in probably lotho ls eelcor tragic arrogance if we're just like another board wipe we might we might just do that um because yeah like i don't know i've i've been underwhelmed by drana 
because like really like i said like you're only attacking with like two or three creatures you're not attacking with like several so that that might just end up being a uh, cut that we end up doing uh but yeah uh, so that's pretty much it um i do have to kind of wrap this up a little bit we're we're having um uh, contractors come over to to look at some stuff uh for the house but uh let me know in the comments uh what do you think about this deck if there's any changes or recommendations that you would do uh, but i i've been playtesting this extensively and that's not like a really good hand but like it is very easy to get out Carmen and pump her up to a 10-10. And then next turn, and she's an 11-11. That's lethal for for players. Like, she can get scary fast. And, like, she becomes a problem very quickly. Like, turn 6, she's two-shotting people. Turn 7-8, she's one-shotting so uh but yeah let me know what you guys think uh if there's a card that i have missed that uh you think would be absolutely crucial to uh making this deck even better uh there is a funny i saw something on uh, reddit for um pantalaza so, Ace, if you're still here, you will enjoy this. It's a 95 land deck. With uh, Pantalaza as the commander. So, I'm going to uh, recreate it, talk about it uh, in a few days. Uh, but, yeah, we'll we'll talk about this. This is, I think, the final version of our Velociraptor deck uh but yeah there, there are very specific cards that uh, synergize with pantalaza's discoverability and so um you discover for five you discover a specific spell uh you bounce him bring him back so with a plus one plus one counter so he discovers again discovers for six and then i think that either discovers for six or or something like that um and basically it just it board wipes everything and then if you don't have anything while the spell resolves you win the game it's a very weird deck but it, it it's hilarious once you kind of figure it out so i'll i'll be going over that and and we'll kind of like discuss it later so uh with that thanks for uh tuning in and uh we'll see you next time